Whenever I'm training engineers using Creo, or discussing modelling techniques with customers, rounds are generally viewed as something that are simple to do and generally put onto models just before they're complete. This, I suppose, replicates the design process and indeed the manufacturing process, where a round or a fillet is added late in the workflow, either as a finishing touch to a machine part or to ensure a moulded component looks good and comes out of the mould OK. And I'm guilty of this too. It's easy just to select an edge, hit round and move on. It's a quick and easy fix. However, there's so much more that can be achieved using the round functions in Creo to ensure that you achieve your design intent, and particularly with moulded or 3D printed designs, far more subtle and tailored geometry can easily be achieved. Over the next few minutes, I'll be showing you a selection of some of the more advanced rounds in Creo, and hopefully you'll be able to see that technically they're simple and easy to apply, but give you far more control over the final geometry of your models. In this example, we'll look at the options where two cylindrical features intersect. This may be a place at which, in a moulded or printed part, there is a tendency for weakness, depending on the material, to be evident. The default round gives you this slightly v-necked result, which might be fine but one looks a little strange and two is strong laterally but then weaker longitudinally. The round searches for geometry to conjoin and as it creates the tendency the radius does actually remain consistent but may not be as required aesthetically. On the second upright tube I'm using the chordal round option. A chordal round is a variable round in which you specify a chord length from which the round is created. The round radius is determined at each location so the chord length is maintained. The tangent edges of the resulting chordal round appear parallel, giving you a more consistent and aesthetically pleasing result. A simple and useful change. This second example uses a useful feature if your geometry is complex and multifaceted, for instance a moulded plastic part with ribs and bosses. There are a couple of quick options. You can simply use the selection filter to specify edges and draw a net over the part like this. You can then simply round all the selected edges concurrently. However, it's a bit of a smash and grab and only really offers an uncomplicated outcome. Far nicer is to use the auto round feature. This gives you a more control. You can specify a rad value separately for concave and convex transitions and also select edges that do not require a round. On this example I'm rounding the convex edges at 2mm and the concave at 3mm radius. I'll also exclude these outer edges, so they remain sharp. Depending on the complexity of your model and the spec of your machine, this takes a few seconds to process and gives a good consistent result. Great for parts that need to be done to a deadline or do not require over sophisticated finishing. Brilliant for getting your plastic parts ready for the mould tool maker. On this demo part I'm going to show some other more advanced and nuanced examples of the round feature. This should give you some ideas about how you can apply them to your own work. When applying a full round to two edges you have the ability to retain the intended dimensions with the round tangent to the original size of the part. This can be applied to parallel edges or tapered if required, as you can see on this part. It takes the guesswork out of the process and ensures your features remain correct. The round through curve gives you the ability to define the profile of the round along an edge. For 3D printed parts this is a great feature. You can specify precise geometry using a sketch prior to applying the round, then simply select the curve and the sketch is mirrored onto the perpendicular face. Similar in some ways, the variable round function allows you to apply different radius values at specified points along an edge. This can be simply two points at each end of the edge, or multiple at particular placement points. Just add as many as you need. The geometry you select when placing rounds on your models has an impact on how the round behaves. Make sure you look up our mini masterclass on advanced selection techniques to learn even more on this. It can have a major benefit for your models to remain robust and perform as they are intended to. With rounds, if I select an edge, we get the expected result of course, but what about when we need to cross or span a gap in the geometry? Selecting the edge here just picks the particular section as expected. However, if I select the two perpendicular surfaces, the round is applied to all of the edges included. 
are treated as one. This ensures that your design intent is captured, even as you make any further changes. Another advanced round is the conic. This gives you an alternative geometry to the standard circular round, allowing a more subtle and tailored effect to be achieved. Conics get their name from their origin. They're essentially a cross section of a cone and the eccentricity of the conic, i.e. how sharp its curvature is, is controlled by the row parameter. This figure between 0 and 1 has the effect of sharpening or flattening the curve, great for getting a more nuanced feature when required. Sometimes the quick option of applying a simple round to an edge is the best option. However, as you've seen with these few examples we've gone through today, there's far more you can achieve if you're willing to explore the advanced round options. Keep an eye on our website for more mini masterclasses, helping you get the most out of your career.